the idea of the grant was to encourage presenters on university campuses to find some kind of a theme, some kind of a program by which they could involve the other um, sides of the campus, academic, especially the non-arts disciplines, in some kind of a process that would involve them working more closely with performing artists. The full name is Banned, Blacklisted, and Boycotted, Censorship, and the Response to It. And it's the B Word Project. Censorship is a terrific theme. It rears its ugly head in a lot of different academic disciplines, journalism, science, biology, uh, literature, plus all the arts. We were one of six universities that were awarded the gift. The Doris Duke Charitable Trust is the organization that was forward thinking enough to support the arts presenters in organizing this gift for our university presenters. We owe a great debt to them. They've literally changed how the Carpenter Center works. We made a big wish list of every artist that we would like to work with, and then we paired those artists up with different departments on campus so that we would have students from a lot of different disciplines working directly with these artists. I thought, which artists would I love to work with? I want to work with Bill T. Jones. The question in contemporary dance, postmodern dance, has been, what can movement do? What can it do? Here is a man who is not just an icon in modern dance, but he's still out there walking the walk and talking the talk. He's a practitioner, he's got his company, he's directing the live arts space in New York. And I called up Bill T. Jones's office, and I said, you don't know me, but this is a project that I'm working on, and I would love it if Bill T. Jones would consider working on it too. What would you suggest would be a wonderful way for Mr. Jones to be involved in? And they discussed it at the company and they came back with, we think um, a production of Reading Mercy in the Artificial Nigger performed by students under the direction of Mr. Jones might be really interesting. Reading Mercy, of course, came from my own uh, I was so struck by Flannery O'Connor's stories and then the outrageousness of this story that I was looking for some response to it. How do you know I never saw a nigger when I lived there before, Nelson asked. We toured it for two years. I didn't feel it was seen enough. That's why I'm very excited that it's now coming back here because I'm going to put it back into repertory with my company next year. Since becoming a dance major uh, in undergrad in 2000, he has always been in my history books. Um, someone who I've read about and I purchased um, a biography of him that's autographed that I found in a thrift shop um, a few years ago that I was really excited about and knowing that in a few hours he's going to be in the studio with us. Um, it's exciting and nerve-wracking and just um, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So who's now from his so please uh, don't take offense, but I'm terrible with remembering names. He is a man that walks in and he demands that you are as dedicated to the form as he is. Again, go in the back, go into back, and walk forward. Who are you? Hi, I'm Jay. Hello, I'm Jay. Do it again. I'm quite honestly, so grateful for CSU in terms of being willing to do this because this is a huge project that is outside the norm. It doesn't usually happen in universities. I loved it because the fact that the piece is based on a Flannery O'Connor short story meant that I could have literature students working on it. The fact that it's not just dance students in the production but also theater students meant that there would be involvement with the theater department, so automatically it fulfilled my goal of getting a lot of different departments involved. Alex, could you read this please? Yeah. Um, read it please. Mr. Head meant them to see everything there is to see in the city so that he would be content to stay at home for the rest of his life. Dancers utilizing text is not as uncommon as some people might think that it is. I think the major difference in this particular piece is that the dancers aren't the ones delivering the text, we actually have actors delivering the text. One night they might read a little bit different, and you have to adapt your dancing based on how you hear, really, your collaborator reading. It really was an amazing experience. Granted, I think I've said enough in the piece, but uh, 
you learn a lot of valuable lessons, both on the stage and off the stage. And I think for most of our students in this particular project, they've never worked with somebody of that caliber before. Who's going to hold a place in the dance history in the United States forever? He is Bill T. Jones, you know, he's a legend. Why don't you ask one of these niggas, he said, you was the one who got us lost. Right, so that was two parts or three? During the headlights. Now, can that all be faster? I wanted him to think highly of our students, but I also wanted him to challenge them. And so when he was putting them, you know, to it, and they, he was on them, I was happy because I they need that. Good, good. But there were a couple moments where he was like, "Okay, now you're doing this." I, Jeremy, and I do the helix. We walk back and forth, and he gave us little roles to play. And I was like, "Okay, you're just gonna do it. You're just gonna be honest and be who you are." No, I say a lot of things. Well, it's it's getting to me quite a little bit that I just need to talk to you. But everything gets to you. Well, you know. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> well, she's a spicy one, isn't she? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He was completely welcoming and honest, and I think we all brought that back, and it was a great experience then of us learning, and nobody felt too scared. We were all just there. We have to become these characters that were completely different than who we are. This is how he's walking. Arch that lower back this way. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Someday you'll understand. Yes. It was different for me trying to portray that character, especially being that I don't feel the same hatred that I feel Mr. Head felt in the story. They had to dig inside themselves to find out what this piece meant to them in their life, even if they hadn't experienced some of this story. And I think finding the humanity in everybody's story and the connection in everybody's story is an important part of being an artist and I think it's an important part of being human and also um, being connected to each other. My initial feeling was intimidation, but he's, he was very inspiring. Being here, I see people and I think, oh, that might be interesting to work with that person and actually have them grow in the, in the professional dance world, to be a member of my company.